I want to highlight one piece that, that I think will be very interesting for people. I did a podcast on my continuous glucose monitor a few weeks ago, and I talked about honey. And you know, uh, love you, it. honey, right? So you said something earlier, and I just want to clarify this for people. If the pH of the saliva doesn't drop below 5.5 or so, we can't get tooth decay. And the way that the pH of the mouth drops below 5.5 is usually carbohydrates and sugar. But one of the things that I've noticed, and I think you also turned me on to this a few months ago, is that in research studies, when humans eat raw honey, the pH of the mouth drops temporarily and then rebounds very quickly. So you were one of the first people that turned me on to the idea that honey is not going to have the same effect as a processed sugar in the mouth, is it? No, as a matter of fact, if you want a great toothpaste, brush your teeth with honey. And there are double blind studies that show that it uh, doesn't cause tooth decay. If anything, it's healthy and healing. And, it, and what's interesting about honey, it's been used for thousands of years and honey actually is a healing medicament. Um, in a dental, uh, well, there you go, I see that. Uh, this is a very good study that shows that um, you could prevent uh, gum infection, gingivitis, by just brushing with honey. Uh, honey also is good therapeutically. If you had a tooth that was removed and you had what's called a dry socket, some people that listening may know what a dry socket is, quite, quite painful. It's when the tooth is re extracted for whatever reason and the blood clot in the area where the tooth was doesn't do what it's supposed to do and it falls out and there's bone exposed, what happens is there's extremely severe pain for a period of a week to 10 days. And the dentist would put a variety of medicaments in it to help it heal or at least get the pain to go away. You can prevent a dry socket or if you had a dry socket, heal it rather quickly if you just put a little honey into the socket. Um, for example, another situation, and, and since I've had cancer, I have cancer, uh, people that have cancer and radiation treatment and also chemotherapy treatment, one of the side effects that actually is worse than the cancer is called oral mucositis. Um, th this is a damage to the mucous membranes throughout the body. So it's in your gut, in your anus, and in your mouth, but it's so sore, it's raw, it's red, it's bleeding, you can't swallow, you can't eat food, it's hard to talk, it's very, very uncomfortable. And generally physicians will prescribe some kind of um, uh, uh, steroid of some type to control the inflammation and there are huge side effects to that. But there are double blind studies that show if you just swish with honey several times a day and swallow it, it will heal better than the prescription drugs with no side effects. So honey is great. And when you talk about honey, there are over 180 biologically active compounds in honey. And one of the things that honey includes is that it actually has oligosaccharides, which is a prebiotic, although you don't need you don't need fiber for your gut microbiome, by the way. Uh, my, your gut microbiome literally ferments amino acids into the short chain fatty acids that it needs if there is no fiber. But the oligosaccharides are very gentle to the gut and very friendly. It doesn't cause gas and bloating and swelling of the mucosal tissue in the gut like other fibers do. And, and the bacteria in the, in the gut do love it. So you're, when you're eating honey, you're feeding the good bacteria. You're doing everything. I mean, it's just a wonderful food. And it's Animal based. It's not plant based. <laughs> it's not plant based. Yeah, I've been sharing a few of the, I've been sharing a few studies that uh, anyone that saw the podcast last week or two weeks ago for the CGM will know the effect of Ethiopian multiflora honey on fluconazole resistant candida species in the oral cavity of AIDS patients. There's uh, many more here that I will share real quickly. While you were just talking, I shared this one uh, about oral mucositis, a randomized controlled trial with honey. Um, I guess, why are we not surprised, right? It, I, I love sort of this idea that, goodness gracious, this is I'll tell a, you another uh, thing about honey. I was um, somebody, I can't remember who contacted me. They had a patient. Um, so it was an integrative physician. They had a patient that had a diabetic ulcer that they could not get to heal. And they saw some, some of my articles about honey for whatever reason. And they asked me, what did I think about that? And I said, well, you know, honey has a variety of 
literature, uh, research in medical journals for healing all kinds of wounds, I would just go ahead and put honey on the wound, pay, put a piece of gauze over it and uh, see what it does. And that actually healed this diabetic ulcer that never was healing from conventional methods. Oh, this is well known. Yeah, yeah and this. wound care in the hospital when I was doing my residency, there's the, the hospital will sell you a, a two ounce tube of honey for $30 or $40. It's, yeah, but it's processed know, honey. Medi honey. It's not, yeah. But it's processed. It's yeah, yeah but they, they actually sell it, meta honey. It's, yeah, it's a yeah. real thing and it's very well known. And, and of course, they'll sell it to you for 10 times the markup because it's some sterile honey, but it's probably less good than what you'd find anywhere. <laughs> yeah. I'm, anywhere I'm else. That. So I believe it. Yeah. And I just want to highlight for people that on your website, you have uh, a lot of great articles about this. Please check this out, guys. I'll link to these in the show notes. DrDanenberg.com, Manuka Honey Mouth Health. Here is a, a, a great list of references for the oral benefits of honey. Uh, antibacterial effects on nearly 60 species prevents the development of resistant strains. Manuka Honey, preventing the growth of biofilms, reducing the production of acids, reducing gingivitis, on and on um, with the benefits of honey. So I... I, I think that this is interesting to point out because a non-processed sugar or specifically honey does not have the same effects in the mouth with regard to tooth decay that a processed sugar does. And everyone gets worried about this. I'm not saying that everyone needs to include honey in their carnivore diet, but if you want to include some honey or you want to include some carbohydrates in a carnivore or an animal-based diet that are not going to have complex fibers, then this is the way to do it in my opinion. It's been great for me. As I said on the Continuous Glucose Monitor podcast, I found that it helps me manage my electrolytes better. I am not insulin resistant. As I showed in that podcast, you can see my CGM readings. My fasting glucose is very low. I'll get a little spike. It comes back to normal very quickly. I would refer everyone back to the Continuous Glucose Monitor podcast for all this information. But I really think that a raw organic honey is a, is a, very, is a very potentially beneficial thing 